Good evening. Let us begin with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, Lieber Vater im Himmel, Lord, we thank you that we again can bow our knees before you. Ja, wir danken dir, dass wir wieder vor dir unsere Knie beugen können. Uh, Father, you are the only one who can really help and change us. Vater, du bist der Einzige, der uns wahrlich helfen kannst und verändern kannst. Please help us to look up and not to look uh, to those things that Satan wants to show us. So bitte hilft uns hinaufzuschauen und nicht auf das, was Satan uns zeigen möchte. Help us to uh, focus on your word now. Hilft uns auf dein Wort jetzt zu fokussieren. Uh, please give us a, a spirit of a learner. Und bitte gebt uns um, den Geist eines Students. And help us to um, remember your promises. Und bitte hilft uns deine Verheißungen zu erinnern. That the good work you began in us, you will also finish. Dass diese gute Werk, die du in uns angefangen hast, wirst du auch vollenden. And that we uh, uh, that we receive always the grace uh, that is necessary. Und dass wir immer die Gnade erhalten, die nötig ist. Because you promised that as our days be, so shall also our strength be. Du hast verheißen, so wie unsere Tage sein werden, so wird auch unsere Stärke sein. Uh, Lord, please uh, bless now in your word. So bitte segne dein Wort jetzt. Please uh, let it not return void unto you. Bitte bewirke, dass es nicht leer zu dir zurückkehrt. Uh, please uh, be our teacher and unfold it to us. Bitte sei unser Lehrer und entfalte uns dein Wort. Please grant us patience and uh, that we would wait until you fully explain it to us. Bitte gewähre uns Geduld, bis du es uns vollständig um, erklärst. And that we would uh, uh, wait upon you. Und dass wir auf dich warten würden. And we ask and pray in Jesus name. Und wir bitten und beten in Jesu Namen. Amen. Amen. Okay, so this evening we want to look at the feast of Leviticus 23. Und dann wollen wir die Feste von 3. Mose 23 anschauen. And I mean these feasts they have different let's say different applications okay diese feste die haben verschiedene an, verschiedene anwendungen but i just want to go now through these seven feasts okay and just show them how they would be placed in the seventh plague here okay und ich möchte nur durch diese sieben festen gehen und zeigen wie sie hier in diesen siebte plage zu platzieren sind okay and <coughs> there's still some things i don't fully Understand. Es gibt immer noch Sachen, die ich nicht vollständig verstehe. But I will just lay out those things that I understand. Aber ich werde nur das darbringen, was ich wohl verstehe. Okay. So, let us go to Leviticus 23. So, gehen wir zu 3. Mose 23. And let us begin in verse 1. Fangen wir in Vers 1 an. Because this is the chapter about the seven feasts. Okay? Das ist der Kapitel über die sieben Feste. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. In holy convocation ye shall do no work therein, it is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So First he mentions the weekly Sabbath feast, right? Erst erwähnt er das wöchentliche Sabbat. It was a feast, but it was a feast different from the seven feasts that follow. Okay. War wohl ein Fest, aber anders als die sieben Festen, die jetzt folgen werden. Because he then goes on to say in verse 4. Und er sagt jetzt weiter in Vers 4. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which he shall proclaim in their seasons or appointed times. It says, and the fourth day, Uh, 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. So the first feast is the so Passover. The first right? is the Passover. Okay, so and where do we see Passover illustrated in the Bible? First time. Passover, das erste Mal in der Bibel markiert. Exodus. Exodus. Yes, Exodus 12, right? Also so. Keep your finger here, let's turn there. Halte den Platz hier und geht dahin. Mose 12. Uh, 
and uh, let us read here verse 7 to 11, or to 12. Yeah. Wir lesen die Versen 7 bis 12. It says, And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts, and on the upper door post of the houses when they shall eat it. So that's the blood they had to apply, right? Das ist das Blut, die sie da anwenden mussten. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Just jump down to verse 11. It's verse 11. And thou shalt eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in the in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. So here we have the Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Also verse 13. Verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Okay, so here we see what is the Passover. That's the judgment, right? When the Lord passed over. Okay. So he passed all those over that had the blood on the doorpost, right? Okay, but those that didn't, they got executed. Right? So okay. Würde Gericht an sie ausgeführt. And just jump down to verse 29. Vers 29. When it was. So, wann das stattfand. It says, and it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaohs that sat on the, his throne, unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. So when was this Passover? So wann war dieser Passer? Midnight. So midnight. Okay. So, yeah, therefore we can see, uh, we know that's right here, right? We know that that's even here. Is. Okay, so. Pass over. And it was which day? And it was which day? 14th. 14th, right? The 14th. Yes. Okay, and historically back in this time period in the story, in der Geschichte, zu dieser Zeitperiode der Geschichte. What happened to them? What, where did they go? Was geschah mit ihnen? Wo gingen sie hin? Yeah, they went into the wilderness for three days, right? Sie in die Wüste hinein, drei Tage lang. So was the 14th, the 15th and the 16th. 14. 15. und 16. So, and at the 16th, what did they do? Und zur 16. Tag, was taten sie? Ja, they were baptized, right? Sie wurden getauft. So, the same as the... Let me just, just write it here because people otherwise get confused. So it's the 16th, okay? It's the 16 And this was then which feast? Das war welches Fest? First fruits, right? Erstlingsfrüchte. Okay, so you have first fruits. Jonah coming out of the belly. Yes. Into the city. Okay, so I don't know yeah, where, where I can mark now the 15th here, okay? Also, ich weiß nicht genau, wo ich hier den 15. Tag markiere. I just mark it here and nobody know where specifically, okay? Ich marke es eben hier, okay. aber es bezieht sich nicht auf irgendetwas spezifisches Moment. I mean, the only thing you, you might be argue, able to argue is in a sense because it, it illustrates Yeah, the 14th, 15th and 16th, what would it illustrate? Also, the 14th, 15th and 16th, what would it illustrate? Three days in the bread. Sorry? The three days in the bread. Yes, okay. Three angels' messages. Yeah, three angels' messages, right? Three angels' messages. Okay, and yeah, we saw uh, yeah, the first angel here. We have seen the first angel here. Second here. The second here. And third here, right? And the third here. So, I'm open for this, okay? Dazu bin ich dann offen. But, um, so that would be then on the smaller fractal, these three points. Ich werde dann auf den kleineren Fraktal hier diese drei Wegmarken. 
Okay, but the only problem I would have with that is because when you go now back to the Leviticus 23. Das einzige Problem, die ich damit hätte, wenn wir jetzt zu so 3. Mose 23 zurückgehen. Because I, I just think there are different illustrations, okay? Ich glaube, dass sie verschiedene Darstellungen sind. Yeah, so the 14th, 15th and 16th just illustrates this everlasting gospel, okay, so symbol in itself. Okay. 14. 15. und 16. stellt dieses ewige Evangelium da an sich, es ist ein Symbol. No, yes, I, I say that that's what I believe, okay. Yeah, but you have to prove that, yes. so I'm saying. No, I mean, it's definitely for sure that 14, 15, 16 is definitely illustrating the everlasting gospel, right? So for this we can already know that this is the case, right? And that it's only illustrating this, that's something obviously you need to prove. Yeah, that's what yeah. I... Yes. Yeah. Dass dies der ewige Evangelium darstellt, das ist klar, aber dass es nur das alleine stellt, also... But in the, in the feast, there was three times a year, there was a feast. Yes. Right, three times a year, so, but in the, in, in the spring feast and in the fall feast, they also have these three... Specifically in the spring feast, speaking about here, they have these uh, three days were marked as one feast. Ja, I mean, they were all called the, the Passover, right? Yes. Was also diese Frühlingsfesten, die waren alle als ein Fest markiert. Also sie alle markieren der Passafest. I mean, Christ takes it, right? So Christ says, tear down this temple and free it. So he marks it there. Then he says, it's Jonah. And he marks it there. So two times he takes that feast and he marks those three days he doesn't separate them. So Christus nimmt den Fall von Jona, also diese drei Tage im Bauch und auch, wo er sagt, reiße diesen Tempel nieder und in drei Tagen wird er sie wieder aufbauen. Zweimal nimmt er diesen drei Tagen. Es ertrennt sie nicht. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, but when we go now back to Leviticus 23. Okay, aber jetzt zu 3. Mose 23 zurück. Yeah? Uh, when we read now verse, so we read verse 5. It spoke about Passover, now verse 6. In Vers 5 um, gelesen, da spricht über den Passa, jetzt Vers 6. Because it says, And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days he must eat unleavened bread. Okay? So, when was the feast of unleavened bread? So, wann war dieser Fest von ungesäuertem Brot? 15th. 15th. Right? 15. So, that would be here in this 14, 15, 16, right? hier in diesem 14, 15, 16. Okay, but how long was it to last? Aber wie lange sollte es Seven andauern? Days. Seven days, right? Sieben Tage. Okay, and it says here, um, verse 7. Und es sagt hier in Vers 7. In the first day ye shall have an holy convocation, ye shall do no survival work in their inn. So the first day of the feast was the Sabbath, right? So der erste Tag des Festes war ein Sabbat. Yeah. So it was a ceremonial Sabbath, okay? Es war ein ceremoniales Sabbat. No work to be done. Kein Arbeit getan werden. And then verse 8. Dann Vers 8. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is a holy convocation. Ye shall do no survival work therein. So the first day was the Sabbath and the last day was the Sabbath. Der right? erste Tag war ein Sabbat, der letzte Tag war ein Sabbat. And the point I want to suggest is that if you just take the feast of unleavened bread, it's a symbol of itself. Okay. The point I want to do here is that if you take the feast of unleavened bread, it's a symbol for itself. And I want to give my reasons why I would say it. The first holy convocation is here, and the second holy convocation is there. Okay. I will give my reasons why I would say that the first holy convocation is here, and the der zweite da am Ende ist. And then you have seven days in between. Okay. Dann gibt es sieben Tagen dazwischen. Okay, so maybe we just mark this down already. You also had on the, the 14th they were also eaten on leavened bread. Yes. So am 14. Mm -hmm. bei den Passa haben sie auch ungesäuerten Brot gegessen. Okay. Yes. Okay. 
Yes. Okay. And uh, what is your? No, I'm just. I, I, I just knew that. That's why I said it, 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 it is a bit. Okay. That be also. So, because the holy convocation, what did we read? What was it? The holy Versammlung, was war das? Was haben wir gelesen? Was the Sabbath, right? In Sabbath. So the Sabbath is here. So the Sabbath is here. And the Sabbath is rest, right? And the Sabbath is even rule. So you had a rest day here and a rest day there. And the Sabbath rule here and a Sabbath rule there. In between that seven days. And the Zwischen gab es sieben Tage. Okay, <clears throat> so. And yeah, we studied this, right? We, let's go. Um, Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. So then we're to Joshua chapter 1. Let's begin in verse 10. From the first 10. And this is when they were about to cross Jordan. Right? So in verse 10 it says, Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the holes and command the people, saying, Prepare your victuals, for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan, to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. So they were not to possess the land. Right? And to the Reubenites and to the Gadites and to half the tribe of Manasseh speak Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest and hath given you this land. So to whom is he speaking now? To verse 13. So whom spricht er? Yeah, to the two and a half tribes, right? And what did the Lord already do to them? Und was hat der Herr bereits für sie getan? Gave them, gave, gave them rest, right? Hat sie Ruhe gegeben. Okay. And now verse 14. It's verse 14. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side, Jordan. But ye shall pass before your brethren armed, all the mighty men of Bela, and help them. So that's what we study, right? Yes. They were now to help the others to also get their possession. So there would be this this first group, right, that enter into rest. And what does this white say? Who helps whom? Church triumphant aids the church militant, right? So they help not them here to also find their rest, right? Okay, because then it says in verse 15, to help them until the Lord hath given your brethren rest, as he hath given you, and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. Then ye shall return unto the land of your possession, and enjoy it, which Moses, the Lord's servant, gave you on this side, Jordan, toward the sun rising. Okay, so, and during the seven days of unleavened bread, what, what does it signify, unleavened bread? And these seven days of ungesäuerten Brot, what does that mean? No sin. Yeah, no sin. Keine mm. Sünde. No sin in what? Keine Sünde in was? In your life. Yeah, yeah, in the bread, right? In das Brot. You're eating, okay? Dein, dein Essen. Uh, you ate unleavened bread, so you eat now a pure message, right? Du isst jetzt ein reines Botschaft. Okay, because August 11, 1840. 11. August 1840. What comes down? Was kommt herab? Angel of Revelation 10, right? Engel von Offenbarung 10. So let's go there, Revelation 10. Gehen wir da hin? Yes, that's true, but the unleavened bread. Represents the life of Christ, or he was the he was the bread that came down from heaven. Yes. So it's not so much. I mean, I don't want to say so much a clean messenger. It just represents your life. No, I mean they were to eat unleavened bread, right? Seven days. Okay, but okay, I'm not arguing about. They were to 
Okay, we put it there this morning, right? Virgins going forth. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Die gehen voran. What are you to do? Was sollen sie tun? Gather oil. Sie sollen das Öl sammeln. The oil is the bread that comes down from heaven. Das Öl ist das Brot, das vom Himmel herabkommt. Okay, that, this is the point I'm making. They, they have to eat Christ. And that, that's the point I'm making. No, okay, but um, the, the point is that it's, it's marking a, a holy people there, that you're, you're eating of them. The, the bread represents a holy people, that's what I'm saying. The, the people represent the bread that comes down from heaven. There's the angel. It's God's people. Because it, this, I'm sure you can read it. It clearly says that the, 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 the unleavened bread represents Christ's life. So when you have a people there, right, comes God's people and he sends them, they are the unleavened bread. Also wenn Gott ein Volk hier hat und sie sendet sie, also das Volk, sind das ungesäuertes Brot. Ja, yeah, I mean, they represent, obviously, they're now sanctified by the truth, so, yes, but... Right. So the people have to, to receive of their message. Yeah. So the, the other Die people. anderen yeah. sollten von ihren Botschaften erhalten. Yeah, that's the exact point I want to make. It's, they give now a pure message that they have to eat. Yeah. So, diese Gruppe geben ein reines Botschaft, die den anderen denn essen muss. Okay, so let's go to Revelation 10. So, gehen wir jetzt zur Offenbarung 10. Beginning in verse 1. Von dem Vers 1 an. It says, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right hand, uh, right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. Right? So, yes, comes down, has a little book open. Er right? kommt herab und diesen kleinen Buch ist offen. So, that's now this pure message that will go forward. Okay? Das ist diese reine Botschaft, der vorangehen wird. Because it says in verse 3, in Vers 3 sagt es, And he cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth, And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. So what is he uttering now? So what does he say from himself now? Seven thunders. Seven thunders. The seven thunders. This is pure message, right? It's a reine Botschaft. And the angels are the people that are also pure now, giving this pure message, right? These angels are the people that are also pure now, giving this pure message. Okay. So. Um, Let us go back to Leviticus 23. And this entering into the rest, right? So no survival work. What does Hebrews 4 say? So in dieser Röhre eingehen, also kein weltliches Arbeit, was sagt Hebräer 4? You will cease from your own works, right? Du wirst aufhören von deinen eigenen Werken. So the first group sees us here and the second group here. Right? So die erste Gruppe hört hier auf, der zweite da. Okay. So, and this would be a parallel to what other illustration? Und das wäre dann eine Parallel zu welcher weitere Darstellung? The two harvests, right? Die zwei Ernten eben. Okay. So two times people are here then gathered together. It's a holy convocation. Zwei Mal werden Menschen hier zusammengebracht, also versammelt. Es ist eine heilige Versammlung da. Okay, it's holy because the people that are now gathered here are holy when they harvest it. Eben heilig, weil die Menschen, die hier versammelt sind, sind heilig, wenn sie geerntet werden. Okay, good. Now let us continue. So machen wir weiter. Leviticus 23. Dritte Mose 23. Um, verse 9. Verse 9. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. And ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf and he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. So that was now the 
Feast of First Fruits, right? Das war das Fest des Erstling, Erstlingsfrüchten. So, and we saw in one illustration, yeah, when you have the 14th, 15th, and 16th, it's right here. Und wir haben in einer Darstellung gesehen, wenn es der 14., 15. und 16. ist, dann ist es eben hier bei den 16. Okay, but we also know in a different application. Okay. Aber wir wissen auch in einer anderen Anwendung. It can also be marked here. Es kann okay. auch hier angewandt werden. Yeah. Because the first fruit, who are the first fruits? Weil die Erstlingsfrüchte, wer sind das? Let's go to Revelation chapter 14. Gehen wir zu Offenbarung 14. And keep your finger in Leviticus. Halte den Platz hier. Revelation 14. Offenbarung 14. And let us begin in verse 1. Fangen wir in Vers 1 an. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. So it's a hundred forty-four thousand, right? This is the hundred forty-four thousand. Now verse four. It's verse four. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. So what are they? Also was sind sie? First fruits. Right? Sie sind Erstlingsfrüchte. Now let's go to chapter 7. Gehen wir zu Kapitel 7. And there it says, uh, hold the winds. Yes? Und da sagt mm -hmm. es, halte den Wind. Now verse 4. Vers 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty-four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So they are first fruits, right? This is in Hundred forty-four thousand. Hundred forty-four thousand. And then verse nine. It's verse nine. Because he said, I heard the number of them, right? Er hat gesagt, dass er den Zahl von ihnen gehört hat. So he could count them. Er konnte sie zählen. But in verse 9 it says, Vers 9 sagt es, After this I beheld in law a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. So what's this now? So was ist das jetzt? The group man multitude, right? The große Volkszahl. And we studied this, right? So in this illustration, then the 144,000 would represent this group and the great multitude, that group, right? Das haben wir studiert in dieser Darstellung. Die 144,000 wäre diese Gruppe und der große Volksmenge wäre dann diese Gruppe sein. Okay, so therefore, in this context, the first fruits would be here. Right? Deswegen in diesem Zusammenhang die Erstlingsfrüchten werden denn hier am Anfang sein. And when you go back to Leviticus 23, zurück zu 3. Mose 23 gehen. Then verse 14. Then Vers 14. Still speaking about the first piece of first fruits here. Spricht immer noch über den Fest des Erstlingsfrüchten. It says, And ye shall eat neither bread nor parched corn nor green ears until the self same day that ye have brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. So, what was not possible? So, was war nicht möglich? Only after they brought the first fruits. What was possible after, or what was not possible after? Not. So, was war nicht möglich, nachdem sie die Erstlingsfrüchte gebracht haben? No. Sorry, it was complicated. <laughs> so, um, what was only possible after they brought the first fruits? So, was war nur möglich, nachdem sie die Erstlingsfrüchte gebracht haben? The harvest. The harvest. The exactly. end. Okay. So, therefore, we can see. Uh, so, this harvest here 
cannot be gathered in unless you have the first fruits. So, diese Ernte kann nicht eingesammelt werden, es sei denn, man zuerst die Erstlingsfrüchte hat. Okay, but when you come here, which is here, right? So, wenn wir jetzt hier zu Ende ankommen, was eben hier ist, yeah, they also just first fruits compared to those that still get gathered in. Die sind dann okay. auch Erstlingsfrüchten hier in Bezug auf diejenigen, die danach eingesammelt werden. Because we studied this, right, with a making up the number. Yes? Wir haben das studiert, also das Vervollständigen des Zahles. So here you have two tribes. So hier hat man zwei Stämmen. And they now join with the ten to make up the number. Right? Schließen sich den zehn an, um den Namen zu um den Nummer zu vervollständigen. But they are when once they completed, they also only two tribes. Bring in all the ten tribes. Right? Wenn sie vollständig sind, sie sind dann wiederum die zwei Stämmen, die dann den zehn einbringen müssen. Okay, so therefore it's just, just, just a smaller fractal of. So deswegen das hier ist nur eine kleinere Fraktal, okay. was hier oben stattfindet. Okay, very good. So, then let us continue. So machen wir weiter. Leviticus 23. Dritte Mose 23. And the next feast is Pentecost. The next fest is Pfingsten. Verse 15. Verse 15. It says, And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall ye complete. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer an a new meat offering unto the Lord. Ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two ten steels. They shall be of fine flour, they shall be bacon with leaven, they are the first fruits unto the Lord. Okay, so Pentecost was also a feast of first fruits, right? So Pfingsten war auch ein Fest des Erstlingsfrüchten. But what was the difference? Was war der Unterschied? To the other first fruits. To den anderen Erstlingsfrüchten? Leaven. Okay, it was leaven in, in it, and it was wheat harvest, exactly. Okay. Es war durchsäuert und es war auch den, den, den Weizen ernte. Yes. So the other one was barley harvest, yes? The andere mm -hmm. war Gerste ernte. And where, where did we see these two harvests? In which story? Wo können wir diese zwei Ernten sehen? In welche Geschichte? Ruth, right? Von Ruth. And just keep your finger on Leviticus, let's turn that shortly. So, halte den Platz hier und geht zur Ruth. So Ruth chapter 1 verse 22. So Ruth 1 verse 22. This is when Naomi comes back from Moab. Here is when Naomi um, zurückkommt from Moab. So Ruth 1 22. Ruth 1 verse 22. It says, So Naomi returned. And Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. Yes? So that's barley harvest. So that's the first harvest. So when you go now to chapter 2, so chapter two verse 23, verse 23, it says, So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz, to glean unto the end of barley harvest, End of wheat harvest, and dwelt with a mother in law. So here you see two the two harvests mentioned. So right? here can we the two ernten erwähnt sehen. Okay. So in barley was always the first harvest, and then wheat. Right. The first was the first ernte, and then the wheat ernte. Okay, and I'm pretty sure that we understand it correctly, but maybe there's more to it. Ich bin mir sicher, dass ich das richtig verstehe, aber vielleicht gibt es mehr noch dazu. Yeah, that we always understand that these two harvests are the two groups, right? Yes, wir verstehen, diese zwei Ernten markieren die zwei Gruppen. Yeah, barley is always the, the first people that get ripe first. So, okay. Die Gerste sind die ersten, die zuerst reif werden. And then wheat is the next group. Weizen okay. ist der nächste Gruppe. Well, okay. in order to find the 14th day, you have to have the barley harvest. So, um diesen 14. Yes. Tag findig zu machen, musste man den er äh, Gerste Ernte haben. Yes. I mean, oh, okay, it was the day closest to the barley. Oder der Tag, der am nächsten, uh, is closest to the full moon, right? 
I mean, they always had to watch out that on the 16th they had red barley. Right? Also, sie mussten immer feststellen, dass am 16. des Monats hatten sie Gerste. Okay. So, but let's go now back to Leviticus 23. So, gehen wir jetzt zurück zur 3. Mose 23. So, it was Pentecost, right? Did, did you, you said 16th, but do you mean 14th? No, no 16th. Mm -hmm. First fruits. First fruits was. Ah, oh, okay. Yes. So, gehen wir zurück zur 3. Mose. Okay, Leviticus 23. Mose 23. So in Pentecost was which day? Pfingsten war welcher Tag? It was the 50th, right? Mm -hmm. It was the 50th Tag. Okay, and it says here you were to count 50 days from the 16th, right? It says here that you 50 Tage from the 16th anzählen solltest. So when you mark the 16th here, the 50th would bring you then down to Pentecost, right? The 16th here markieren werden. Der 50. Tag werdet ihr hier zu Ende, zu Pfingsten bringen. Because we mark this even this morning. Yes. Wir haben das sogar hier heute Morgen markiert. The Pentecost is here at the end, because what is the Pentecost? Pfingsten ist hier am Ende, denn was ist es? It's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, right? Ausgießung des Heiligen Geistes. I don't know why you're making that argument. Why you saying must go from there from the 16th? I mean, this is also Pentecost. Yes, no, I come to this. Okay. So... So you have Pentecost here, right? Du hast Pfingsten hier. But we also mark this. August 11, 1840 is on the big fractal here. So we have das auch hier markiert, 11. August 1840 auf der große Fraktal ist eben hier. And you have it here, right? Und wir haben das auch hier markiert. In GC 611, what does it say? Große Kampf 611, was sagt es? Well, let's read this again. I will post it shortly. Ich muss das nochmal lesen. Das kommt in der Livestream jetzt. Here the German comes now. So Deutsche folgt jetzt gleich. Okay. Then let's read here. Let's read this. It says, The angel who unites in the proclamation of the third angel's message is to lighten the whole earth with his glory. That's the angel of Revelation 18. Yes? This is the angel from Offenbarung 18. And what does Sister White say? When, when does it pour out? Sagt Ellen White, wann wird das ausgegossen? In the seventh plague. Seventh plague, right? Siebte Plage. So, right here. Okay. Right here. And she then says, she compares it now with August 11, 1840. Sie okay. vergleicht das jetzt mit 11. August 1840. Okay. I don't know if... <laughs> <laughs> I was just seeing your face. <laughs> uh, you understand? The seventh plague begins here, right? Verstehst okay. du, dass der siebte yes. Plage fängt hier an? Okay. So, even though we write it here, but obwohl wir es da schreiben, es fängt eigentlich hier an. Okay, good. So, because she says now, a work of worldwide extent and unwanted power is here foretold. The Advent movement of 1840 to 44 was a glorious manifestation of the power of God. So now she compares it, right? So it's vergleicht sie das. Revelation 18 with. August 11, 1840. Right? 18 mit 11. August 1840. Okay. And then in the next paragraph she says, The work will be similar to that day, excuse me, the work will be similar to that of the day of Pentecost. Yeah, so, August 11, 1840 and Revelation 18 is similar to Pentecost. Okay. 11. August 1840 and Offenbarung 18 are ähnlich wie Pfingsten, sagt sie. Okay, and what does Sister White also say about the Midnight Cry? Was sagt Ellen White auch über der Mitternachtsschlug? Yeah. These are all my things to come Okay, so the latter rain comes with ten times the power. Der Spätregen kommt mit das zehnfach an Kraft. Okay, 
So, yeah, so we see Pentecost here and Pentecost there. So we can see Pfingsten here and Pfingsten there. Okay, let's go back to Leviticus 23. And these, I don't know, do you know where, where we get this from actually? Because it says they were with leaven, right? These, these two loaves. No, because we always used to say yeah, the leaven was baked out. Okay. Wir haben immer gesagt, dass das ähm, Sauerteig soll hinausgebacken werden. I mean, it's in the, it's Christ took this parable because leaven is, he used leaven in two different ways, right? Yes. Christus hat den Sauerteig, äh, äh, also den Hefe, in zwei verschiedene Arten angewandt. Okay, he takes it from the Old Testament. Und er nimmt diese zwei Arten von okay, dem so Testament her. The woman took three measures, uh, put leaven in three measures of meal until they were... Um, Fully grown. So, die Frau hat drei Maß von Hefe durch das Teig durch Säuert, bis sie vollständig gewachsen ist. Okay, but where, where is that would be then the level of truth, right? Das yes. wäre dann dieser Sauerteig der Wahrheit. But it has to be proven. It has to be baked in the fire. Aber right? es muss um, gebacken werden. Sister White right. says the gospel is in the making of a loaf of bread. Ellen White right sagt, das Evangelium findet man in das das Machen eines Leibbrotes. It shows you that the very thing that you, the natural, does not nature teach you not to eat the bread until the leaven is baked. Is baked out. So, die Natur lehrt uns, du sollst nicht den Sauerteig essen, bis es gebacken, herausgebacken worden ist. Okay, yes. that would be the argument. Okay, good. So, all right, so these two leavened breads. Um, would be then illustrating it when the leaven is then baked out there to be presented. Right? Zwei mm -hmm. Leib gesäuerten Brotes um, werden dargebracht, nachdem das Sauerteig ausgebacken worden ist. Okay, good. <coughs> Now let us uh, continue. Machen wir weiter. Uh, next feast. The next feast. Leviticus 23, verse... 24. Actually, let's before we do that, let's read also verse 21. Because it says here, still speaking about Pentecost here. It says, And ye shall proclaim on the self same day that it may be a holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no survive work therein, it shall be a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. So, what is it also? So, was ist, uh, ist auch noch? It's a holy convocation and it's a Sabbath. Right? Eine heilige Versammlung und ein Sabbath. So, just like what we already marked here. Yeah. Genauso wie wir bereits hier am Ende markiert haben. So, two times Pentecost, it marks the rest. Okay. Zweimal Pfingsten, das markiert die Ruhe. Okay, good. Uh, Leviticus 23. Dritte Buch Mose 23. And then verse 24. Und jetzt Vers 24. It says, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall, be, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, and holy convocation. So that's now the Feast of Trumpets, right? So das ist jetzt der Fest der Posaun. And what was it? Und was war das? Sabbath. Also Sabbath, you know? Holy convocation. Ein Sabbat und eine heilige Versammlung. Okay, now let us go to Matthew 24. Jetzt zu Matthäus 24. Um, let us begin with verse 29. From Vers 29 an. It says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So, where are we on the line? Sind wir auf der Linie? Yeah, of the Anfang right? der siebte Plage. So, right here. 
Gerade hier eben. Verse 30. Vers 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven, with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, and uh, from one end of heaven to the other. So, whom is Jesus now sending out here? So, whom sent Jesus here out? His angels, right? Engel. How many angels? Wie viele Engel? Okay, different answers, okay. Yeah. Twelve, yes. Twelve. Okay. Yeah, she caught my thought. Because that's the, the twelve oxen that are sent out, right? Das sind die zwölf Ochsen, die gesandt werden. Okay. So, and they are sent with what? Und sie werden was, mit was gesandt? With a trumpet. Okay. Posaune. So they give now this, this trumpet sound. Okay. okay. And when you go back to Leviticus 23. And when we come now to the Day of Atonement, this is something I don't fully understand at the moment, okay? When we zum Versöhnungstag come, es gibt was, was ich nicht vollständig verstehe. Yes. Because Matthew 24, for instance, verse 29. Yeah. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 29. Is the midnight cry. Is the midnight cry. They are sent with the great sign of a trumpet. Sie mit der eines yes. I mean, that's what I marked there. Right? Yes. Okay. So, but the point is, uh, let's just read this and then I can tell you what, what my struggle is at least. Okay. So, lesen wir das und dann kann ich dir sagen, womit ich zu kämpfen habe. It says uh, verse 26. Verse 26. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be in holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So, it's this day where you to afflict your souls, right? And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. Whatsoever soul it shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Ye shall do no manner of work, it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even, from even unto even, ye shall celebrate your Sabbath. Okay, so it's this day of atonement here, right? And when we go now, keep your finger here. Let's go now to Revelation chapter 8. So it's this day of affliction, right? Tag des And in Revelation 8, verse 2. Oh, sorry, verse 1 beginning. This one. It says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. So when does he open the seventh seal? So when opened the seventh seal? Would be here, right? Because the angel comes down and he has the book opened, right? The angel comes here herab and has the book open. In and seven thunders utter their voices, yeah. therefore seven seals must be opened, right? The seven donnern give their erscheinen ihren stimmen, so deswegen the siebte seal must open. Verse 2. Verse 2. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. 
And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. So what do we ascend now? So what's called the prayers? The prayers, right? The so that would be though of those that are the afflicted ones, right? Okay, so the only question I have now, where do we mark this? Okay. The point is that it's my amazing day, right? On the day, because prophetically, it's mark, marking at the end, right? It's warning you about this, this little test at the end, but here, for instance, he's in the holy place here, right? The priest had to go in, uh, take coals off that altar, and put incense in it, and he had to take it into the most holy place in order to to do the work in there. So the priest here is in Heiligtum, and he must this heiße Kohlen von Raucher Altar nehmen und im Allerheiligste gehen, um diesen Werk hier zu tun. Okay, but he, here it says, another king has stood at the altar. So right here, he's not in the most holy place. Vers 3, er steht am Altar. So hier ist er noch nicht im Allerheiligsten. The golden altar is in the holy place. Der goldene Altar ist im Heiligen. So there has to be a point when, when he puts this coals into this censer, he must then go to the most holy blood of the sin before he cast down the altar. So, es gibt einen Punkt, wo er mit diesem Rauchergefäß ins Allerheiligsten gehen muss, um die Sünden auszutilgen, noch bevor er dieser Räucheraltar ähm, zu Boden wird. Okay, and that's what I understand, that the trumpet is blowing, telling you, start sighing and crying, because your sins are about to be blotted down, and if you're not ready, it won't happen. Das ist, was ich verstehe, diese Posaunen fängt an zu erschallen als eine Warnung, Seufst und klagt, weil gleich wird deine Sünden ausgetilgt und wenn du bereit bist, you're not ready, what did you say? It won't happen. It is dann für dich wird das eben nicht geschehen. Because right at the, you know, it's this little bolt and it's right at the end. Denn diese kleine Kasten ist eben genau am Ende, eben hier. The little box is not even there. The little box is here, but it's, no, in this fine. thing it's here, is it not? I mean, this would be this, there, right? There's no little box up there, I'm saying. <coughs> and the, the, this would be yeah, here. Right? Would be well, it would be here and there, right? Yeah. So, so uh, we, we can just, for illustration purposes, I mean, you would need to I just mark, put it here, okay? No, for the inspect der Darstellung markiere ich es eben hier. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I never thought about this point that you make that he's now here in the holy and he still going to the most holy. Über diesen Punkt, dass er hier im Heiligtum ist und noch in alle Heiligste gehen muss, habe ich nicht gedacht. In, in Millerite history, they marked it there. In der Millergeschichte haben sie es eben da gemacht. Because hier. in Millerite history, they never marked the Passover, because they they were following the text. They said that the Passover, you know, the spring feast had already been fulfilled. Pentecost had already been fulfilled. So in Miller Geschichte, die haben das nicht markiert, weil die Frühlingsfesten waren bereits erfüllt. So they, they were dealing with the fulfillment of trumpets and the day of atonement. Sie haben sich mit der Erfüllung von den Posaunen und dem Versöhnungstag befasst. Right. Then when you got to October 22nd, which is the day of atonement, the trumpets now there was no time no longer, so they couldn't apply it by time. It was referring to something in the future. So, wenn sie zu 22. Oktober gekommen sind, diese geschlossene Tür, also ähm, der Versöhnungsteil, also war abgeschlossen, also die Posaunen konnten nicht mehr dann angewandt werden. Es, es war auf irgendetwas in der Zukunft denn jetzt gewesen, weil Zeit war eben nicht länger. Okay, so, it, it was marked in Millerite history, trumpets, they were told, that's what I'm saying, you have, you have to follow that pattern, they, they marked them as the the day of trumpets was blown, leading down to the day of atonement. In der Miller Geschichte, diese Posaunenfest ähm, erschalten, führte zum Versöhnungstag hin. Und die haben das auf diese Weise markiert. But for us, the, the warning there, I mean, he sends these angels with a great sound of a trumpet, warning that Christ is about to enter in there and blot out your sin. Er sendet diesen Engeln mit der Erschall einer Posaune, diese Posaunen als Warnung, dass Christus kurz davor steht, 
til allerheiligste hineinzugehen, om de sønden auszutreten. That's what it was in the type. It has to be that in the antitype. Es war auf diese Weise in der Typus, also Mellergeschichte, es muss auch demnach yeah. auch im Antitypus sein. Not Just say in, in the type. Okay. In, in the written law. Also nicht in Mellergeschichte, sondern in der Typus, wie es in der Gesetz geschrieben ist, war es so, es muss dann auch demnach in das Antitypus so sein. The Mellerites were just following the type also. They, they put the die Milleriten haben auch diesen Typus auch so befolgt, also Posaunen und dann Versöhnungstag. Okay. I mean, definitely the, the problem would be, yeah, the day of atonement cannot start here. Okay. Also das Problem wäre, ist, dass der Versöhnungstag kann nicht hier anfangen. So when the seventh year is open, it's the time of peace. You don't afflict your souls right here. Der siebte Siegel geöffnet ist, ist eine Zeit des Friedens. Du peinigst nicht deine Seele dadurch. Okay, so it's uh, it's not it cannot because otherwise you also for the first group you must have started here already. Okay. Ansonsten für die erste Gruppe musst du bereits hier angefangen mm. haben. I've, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a mm. bit of a dilemma. Maybe that's a good time to bring it right. So Jonah, right? Jonas. Jonah at the cross there gets cast into the water. So Jonas am Kreuz ist ins Wasser geworfen. Right. Jo Christ illustrates these three days. With Jonas three days, right? Christus stellt diese drei Tage mit die drei Tagen von Jonas. So when Jonah gets goes to the cross, there's a time of peace. So wenn right? Jonas zum Kreuz geht, gibt es eine Zeit des Friedens. Yes, the waves cease. Yes. Also die Wellen hören auf zu toben. But the three days are marked from when the wheel swallows him up. Aber die drei Tage werden markiert von dem Punkt an, wo den Wal ihm verschlingt. So I, 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 it's the same. I don't know how to separate the fourteen. From the cross there, but, you, but he, he paralleled those three days with Jonah with these three days. Ich weiß nicht, wie wir den 14. Tag von den Kreuz trennen, aber Christus hat den drei Tagen von Jonah mit diesen drei Tagen but verglichen. I think it was, he was paralleling those three days from the moment he went in the grave. Aber ich meine, dass er diese drei Tage ähm, parallel gezogen hat von dem Moment, Moment an, wo er im Grabe ging. So he would be in the grave at the beginning of the so er werde in den Grab sein von Anbeginn der Zeit des Trübsals. So wie ähm, der Zeit, wo Jonas im Bauch des Wales geht. So, although, I mean, yeah. you get my point? So, although the, the, the cross is the 14, the three days that he's marking is the three days he's in the belly. So, obwohl das Kreuz der 14. ist die drei Tage, die er markiert, äh, markiert sind die drei Tage, die er im Bauch ist. Yes, so, but if this was true, then you could, you, the illustration 14, 15, 16 could not hold anymore, right? Wenn dies der Fall wäre, denn diese Darstellung von 14, 15 und 16 kann nicht mehr standhalten. Ich meine, aber das ist ja, weil er mit Jonas Yes. No, das ist da, weil er markiert ist, eben mit Jonas zu sein. The only point I want to make is here, the, the 14 would mark Pentecost, uh, Passover, right? Also der 14. wäre um, Passa markiert. Yes. Yes. I'm just saying, all, all I'm making this point is, that stands true, I'm just saying there's something about this thought, this little time of peace there, that we don't quite yes. get yet. Es gibt was hier über diese Zeit des Friedens hier, die wir noch nicht vollständig verstehen. Und du machst auch diesen Punkt, der Versöhnungstag fängt nichts an, bis du deine Seele peinigst und der Seele peinigen ist eben den Bauch ist erfahren. Oder wie bei den größeren Fraktal, es ist eben beides. Was ich meine, ist, wenn du also bei den Kreuz hier auf dem größeren Fraktal hier fängt der 1260 an. But it's also the time of trouble, 1260, right? so Aber es ist auch von der Zeit des Trübsals eines der 1260. Also es ist so eben beide. When you take Jonah, the three days are marked in that box, the box there. So wenn du Jonas nimmst, die drei Tage sind eben in diese. Kasten markiert. Aber wenn du sie aus Ägypten herauskommen, dann markierst du sie eben von hier an. Und es lehrt uns eben was. Wir begreifen es nur nicht ganz.
that could be. Okay, <coughs> so, all right, anyways, so we can see the Feast of Trumpets is here. So we can see the Festa Posaunen is in here. And the Day of Atonement uh, cannot begin here, it doesn't make any sense because it's a time of peace. So the Versöhnungstag can here nicht anfangen, das macht keinen Sinn, weil das hier ein Zeit des Friedens ist. So, either begins here or at the end. Uh, so it's fängt to... eben hier an oder eben am Ende. Well, the Day of Atonement had things taking place before he actually went and to blot the sins out. So that, that's the point that Master Box there at the end. He's when he goes actually into the most. Versöhnungstag had Ereignissen, die stattfanden noch bevor ins Allerheiligste ging, um den Sünden auszutilgen. Und diesen Kasten hier am Ende markiert, wo er ins Allerheiligste geht, um den Sünden auszutilgen. Okay, so that's definitely something we need to study out more fully. Okay. So das ist auf jeden Fall irgendetwas, was wir noch völliger ausstudieren müssen. And let's Go to the last feast now, to Leviticus 23 again. So gehen wir zurück zur dritte Buch Mose 23, zur letzten Fest. And um, the last feast we find in verse 34. Der letzte Feast finden wir in Vers 34. 34 to 36. 34 bis 36. It says, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles, for seven days unto the Lord. So it's the Feast of? It's a Feast of Tabernacles. Tabernacles. How else was it called? Laubhut, in other words. How was that noch called? Feast of Ingatherings, right? So the Feast of the Einsamen. Boot goods also. Feast of Einsamen. So yeah, they were to dwell in booths, right? Sie sollen in Laubhütten weilen. Okay, and then it says, um, verse 35. Vers 35. On the first day shall be in holy convocation. Ye shall do no survival work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be in holy convocation unto you. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no survival work therein. Okay, so let's just... Look at this shortly. So let's just anschauen. I just post a quote. Ich werde ein Zitat posten in der Leistung. Okay. Okay. About the Feast of Tabernacles. Über der Laubhüttenfest. Okay, so let's read this. It says, In the seventh month came the Feast of Tabernacles, or of ingathering. This feast acknowledged God's bounty in the product of the orchard, the olive grove, and the vineyard. It was the crowning festal gathering of the year. The land had yielded its increase. The harvest had been gathered into the granaries, the fruits, the oil and the wine had been stored, the first fruits had been reserved, and now the people came with the tributes of thanksgiving to God, who had thus richly blessed them. So what kind of feast is it? What kind of feast is this? Yeah, thanksgiving, right? It's a thankfulness So where you... Thank the Lord now for the harvest that is now completed. Okay. Dem Herrn dankst, danke gibst für die Ernte, die jetzt voll abgeschlossen ist. Also America, they celebrate Thanksgiving. So in America is that a national fest, also diese Dankgebungsfest. Germany, you say also Ernte Dankfest. In Deutschland sagt man Ernte Dankfest. Okay, so and that would be then also again for the first group. Here, right? They are now harvested. Wiederum für die erste Gruppe hier, die sind geerntet. 
second group here. And that's okay. quite a group there. Okay, in this dwelling in booths, what does it represent? And this is while in, in Laubhütten, was steht is there? I mean, what, what does it point forward to? So, of was weiß this? Just Everything. post this also. Noch eine Zitat post this. Such a long quote. Just. As far as I know, it's in your tabernacle with the Lord. Yes, exactly. In the seven days, they're going to heaven. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so, it says we will. On the way, when Christ takes us, we will travel seven days Living in tents. To, to heaven. Okay. Er sagt, dass wenn wir auf dem Weg zum Himmel gehen, mit dem Herrn, es wird sieben Tage dauern. It's just, a, it's just, a, it's just an allegory. Yes. So let's read this. Lass uns das lesen. It says, The people of Israel praised God at the Feast of Tabernacles as they called to mind his mercy in their deliverance from bondage of Egypt and his tender care for them during their pilgrim life in the wilderness. So it was a commemoration for leaving the bondage of Egypt, right? It was an Erinnerung, that they the Knechtschaft from Egypt brought. And then his mercy in the pilgrim life in the wilderness. Und dann seine Gnade in ihrem Pilgerleben durch die Wüsten wandeln. And, and goes on to say, Zeigt weiter. They rejoice also in the conscientiousness of pardon and acceptance through the service of the Day of Atonement just ended. But when the ransomed of the Lord shall have been safely gathered into the heavenly kingdom, forever delivered from the bondage of the curse, under which the whole creation groaneth and travaileth and pain together until now, they will rejoice with, un, with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Christ's great work of atonement for man will then have been completed, and their sins will have been forever blotted out. So this feast takes place when your sins are blotted out. Right? And it points forward to when you are safely gathered into the Heavenly Kingdom. Okay. So it's hin, wenn du sicher versammelt sind in himmlischen Königreich. Yes, but in the parables, are they not? I mean, you put it there, but they're not just at the end. I mean, for the first group, they are gathered in here, right? They're housed. The first group, when they're here, they're in the same place. They're planted. Doesn't matter. They are. That was the first fruits, right? They had to have the first fruits before the main harvest. So must the first fruits have been there before the harvest. And Christ doesn't physically come until the end there. That's when he. Kommt nicht physisch bis zum Ende. I mean, because when they when they come in there, he destroys Jerusalem. He says the rooms they still have this work to do. So he can't. Die hereinkommt und Jerusalem zerstört. Sagt es immer noch, dass es Raum gibt. It would be like the two and a half tribes, right? I mean, I would mark us there just in principle, but I don't know. I mean, it's definitely here at the end here where. It's auf jeden Fall hier am Ende. Aber ich werde es nur im Prinzip hier markieren. I mean, look, Matthew 25, he, he comes, um, the wedding garment, right at the end there. How have you come in without a wedding garment? Matthäus 25, markiert er gerade am Ende da, so, wie bist du hier hereinkommen ohne Hochzeitsgerät? And that's when he comes and does the talents for everybody, and he says, enter thou into the joy of our world. Everybody enters in. Da, er kommt mit, macht die Talenten und sowas, also geht in die Freude des Herrn hinein und so weiter. Das ist da am Ende. I mean... They entered already earlier, right? So o only in principle. Yes. They're not really in there. No, no. I mean, they cannot enjoy it yet. Okay, but so that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it wouldn't mm -hmm. wouldn't be till the end. Yeah. It's not any special end. It's just like the two and a half tribes, right? The two and a half tribes. They enter. Yeah. Right. They've received it, but they can't. They they're not dwelling in booths yet. Yeah, they cannot enjoy it. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. So they can't even enjoy it. Okay. Yes. All right. Anyways. So that would be an illustration of how to mark these seven feasts, okay? Das wäre eine Darstellung, wie wir diese sieben Festen markieren. And the only thing that is still a little bit uncertain is where exactly to mark the Day of Atonement, okay? Das einzige Unsichere ist es, wo genau wir den Versöhnungstag markieren. Okay. And, and we also know, yeah, the trumpet goes here at the beginning of the seventh plague. Wir wissen aber auch, dass die Posaune erschallt hier am Anbeginn der siebten Plage. And we also know that the trumpet goes forth 
yeah, to warn this group to find. Okay. The first group. Okay. Wir wissen auch, dass die Posaune vorangeht hier oder hier, um den erste Gruppe zu warnen. Yes. Okay, good. Alright, so that was were the thoughts. Okay. Das waren die Gedanken. And um, by God's grace, all the other little things we don't understand fully yet uh, will be clear. So. Gott möchte, dass all diese andere Sachen, die noch unklar sind, werden eben sehr bald klar werden. Amen. Amen. Okay. And let us close with prayer. Let us close with prayer.